hello welcome back in today's video I got a Super Nintendo cartridge now this cartridge doesn't work so I'm gonna be taking a look at it and seeing if I can fix it upon first inspection I can see a lot of corrosion the board contacts are even starting to deteriorate I could probably fix this cartridge with Brasso and a few jumper wires, but since this game is a bit more desirable, I'll be doing a board swap. Now if you don't actually want to swap the board or you don't have a donor board to swap with, you can test for continuity on each individual pin and, and check the traces. If you don't have any continuity, you could always add a jumper wire and restore continuity and it should work. So as you can see, this board actually has a few breaks. So there would be three or four jumper wires and I don't want to do that I'd rather just swap the board so here is the board revision so I have to find a compatible game that uses the same board revision so I'll be visiting my favorite website SNES Central and as you can see I pulled up this board revision it's SHVC 1A ON 2 and as you can see this is the board what it looks like and these are all the compatible games now you have Japan and Europe which is PAL and then you have the USA list so of the USA list, my game is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I'll be using a Super Scope. Now keep in mind, when you click on Super Scope, the board revisions, they can have minor differences. There can be, like for instance, this board has a 01 and an 02 variant. They work the same, so don't even worry about that. But in this case, I, the Super Scope I used did have the same revision with the same um, 02 at the end. Now I noticed there was one bent pin, so before I can get in here with my desoldering gun, I actually have to straighten this pin out. So before I get in here with my desoldering gun, I want to clean this board and then I'm going to add fresh solder so I can clear these pins a little easier. By adding fresh solder, it just makes your job a whole lot easier. Mm -hmm. 
Now the chip that I need still has these solder bumps on it. So I'm going to just flatten them out, just wipe them clean so they look a little better. Now here's the donor board. I've already removed the chip. So right now I'm just going to detail the board, make sure it's clean and ready to go. Now here's something important to note, this notch on the chip corresponds with the silk screen. So if you place the chip in the wrong orientation, you're not going to get anything. Now when you're trying to get this chip in, you don't, it's important that you don't force the chip in. You have to finesse it, you have to move every pin and slowly but surely it will actually just snap right into place. You don't have to press it down hard. Okay, with everything in place, clean and ready to go, I'll reassemble it and test it. And just like that, the game fires right up. So now I'll add the two screws and just touch up the label a bit and it's done. So I know this episode was a bit short and I've already done similar repairs like this on my channel. But one thing to note is when I order these games off eBay, I don't know what's wrong with them. They might have a bad ROM, they could have need trace repair, they need a board swap, I don't know. So I just buy these games and hope that I can fix them. and. It, if they make for a good video, they do. If they don't, then they don't. Now, with all that said, stay tuned for more episodes. Like, comment, subscribe, share this with somebody. And thank you for watching.